So here I am under a DS and I'm going to show you how to do the oil change. Uh, this of course I have a hoist which makes life a lot easier but you can do this under jacks and axle stands it's just a bit of a pain when you have to scrap onto the car. So I've got my uh, container already aligned up and I'm going to undo the sump plug. So it's a 21 mil socket which is the same as a spark plug and although I'm using a big breaker bar here it's only just a once it's cracked off, you can, should be able to do it by hand. And this will make a bit of a splash. And make sure you catch the bolt and the washer, because you don't really want to drop that. So it's quite acceptable to undo the sump plug. Apparently there's a lot of talk on the net saying you don't do it, but uh, you can get away with not doing it, but I don't see why. Citroen put the swamp pub there for a reason, so I suggest you use it. Whilst this is draining, I would uh, anneal the washer, or if you have a new one, that's fair enough to use one, that you can anneal the solid copper washers which are on the sump plugs. And the reason you anneal them is that as copper is compressed when it's used, it goes hard and therefore brittle, and you, need, you can anneal this to make it soft again so it'll then seal. And it's very simple to do. So I'm showing you how to anneal the copper washer that's used for sealing the sump plug bolt. So you take a little piece of wire with a hook on it and you light up your blowtorch. And all you need to do is to warm this up until it reaches a cherry red color. Now in this instance, you're gonna go above cherry red, it'll probably go orange like that, but that's perfectly fine. And you don't have to quench it, i.e. get it cooled immediately. You can let it cool down but it, and it'll still have be annealed, but uh, it's obviously much quicker just to put it in water or, in my case, oil, and uh, then you can use it immediately. So I'll just go and do that. When you've got the sump plug off, you'll find that it's hollow, and crud from the engine will collect in there, so you need to clean it out. You can clean it out either in a wash tank or with petrol or whatever, but it's good practice just to clean it right out. So whilst the oil is nearly dripped out, and I have my annealed washer. Doesn't matter if you've still got a couple of drips left because I'm going to take the uh, oil filter cover off. But the majority of the oil is now out of the sump. So screw that up by hand. And then when you're coming to tighten it, it doesn't need to be super tight, but you do need to crush the washer slightly. So that is now nipped up there. And with my breaker bar, which is far too big for the job, but makes it easy, that is sufficient. Now I know I've done that by feel because I've been doing it for a while. I couldn't tell you what torque it is, but it's not particularly high and there's probably is a specification. Right, now I'm just going to drain this oil into my waste tank and then I'll come back and take the filter out. Okay, so I'm now gonna take off the oil filter cover plate and it, the bolts on it are 11 mil, the standard M7s. And there's a gasket underneath it and each of these bolts should have uh, an anti-vibration washer, star washer, which is as Citroen fitted. And you don't really want them undoing and falling off, so it would be advisable, if they don't have them, to fit them. So I'm going cross, take the first four out in a cross pattern, and then come and do the other four. But there's a trick here. If you leave one in and take out the remaining nuts, then the plate will tip over and it'll make it a little bit easier for you to guide the spurt of oil that's going to fall out and hopefully make less mess. A large tray like I have here is extremely useful to contain the mess that you're undoubtedly going to make. It is quite a messy job this and not easy when you're lying under the car, but needs must. So here we go, oil is starting to drip out. If I slacken off the last one slowly, I can control the amount of leakage. Here we go, it's the last belt out. Now the 
Main bolt in the centre of the oil filter is 12 mil. Citroen in the infinite wisdom. I've changed it so it's different from the ones on the filter. And you might be able to see on the camera, I'm not quite sure if you will, but there is a little metal triangle stamped into the bottom plate of the oil filter. And there's a triangle in the sump, cast into the sump, and those need to be aligned. That sets the position of the oil filter. And that is a vital. It's only important, of course, when you're putting it back together again, but nonetheless, easy to see. Right, this is where you get hot oil dribbling all down your hands and you drop sockets and then you make a right mess of it. Oh, the other thing, of course, I should point out is that the engine is hot because that's the best way to drain the oil. And so hot oil gets all over your hands. Right, while we let that drip, I'll now take the filter assembly over to the wash tank and dismantle it and I'll show you the correct sequence. Right, so I have the oil filter assembly here in the wash tank and we're just going to wash it out. You can do this equally in a little tub of petrol if you haven't got a wash tank. And I'm also going to dismantle it because there's a couple of vital O-rings you need to see. So this cup here, which I'll give a clean to first, needs to, to disassemble this. It, it's not quite threaded, but you can just best get it off just by trying to unscrew it off the, off the screw thread. That goes down first. The next is you have an O-ring, and this should be soft and flexible like a normal O-ring. If it's hard and you have to break it off with a pair of pliers, you need a new one. Then there's a washer and a spring. And you have the first cup where the oil filter sits. Again, I'm just washing it as I'm going along. Then you can take out the central bolt, which has a copper washer at the bottom. And the pliers I have in my hand, you need to remove the gauze from the base plate and gently prising your paint stirrer in between the gauze and the plate. You can then take it apart. In here, you will find well any any crud that's in the oil, which should catch on this gauze filter first before it goes through the filter. So, the main filter. That's why this is here. So this one is quite clear and nice. That's fine. But the other important thing is it has an O-ring out the outside. Now again, this O-ring has to be nice and flexible, like a proper O-ring. I think I replaced this one on this car last year, so it's it's perfectly serviceable. But when they go hard, which they do, and they can come off as in bits, uh, and that is not good because it's a vital part that seals. Clean the rest of the parts. Make sure there's no horrible bits of grit anywhere, which you don't really want. That's all clean enough. And then it's just reassembly, which in the best traditions is the reverse of the disassembly process, or something like that. So, put the O-ring on the gauze. Put that in, fit it into the lower cover. You can slip the bolt through. I haven't bothered changing the O-ring, the, sorry, the washer, uh, but you can if you like. And you could kneel it as well, like I demonstrated earlier. Then the spring, washer, the small O-ring, which needs to go over the thread, it's slightly difficult. And then the cap. Now, this cap perhaps slightly counterintuitive, goes down the way. And the oil filter, when we fit it, sits on the ridge on this cup. So that's that assembly, ready to go back in the car. So here we have a filter that I've just taken out of the car, and I'm just going to point out that sometimes the rubber sealing ring, which is fitted on both sides of the filter, can become displaced. It's only lightly glued onto the metal. And the trouble there is that it can stick up in the uh, in the engine, and if you then come and fit another filter straight on onto it underneath, you can get a problem where the the washer itself can get sucked into the oil uh, intake and block the system. So, not a good idea. So make sure that the rubber is out. So you just want to have a quick look up into the chamber when you come to fit the new oil filter. But of course, it's easier to fit the filter to the assembly and then offer the whole thing up as a, as a unit. Remembering 
that you are going to be aligning these triangles. You'll find that once it's roughly in place, if you try and turn it, <laughs> it should be limited. And I'll try tightening the bolt first, perhaps that's a good idea. It's almost like I've done this before. So you can do that up finger tight, and when the triangles are aligned, you'll find that the casing will only turn through a small angle because it's got two feet on it. You'll note that the triangles, they don't point together, they point in the same direction towards the center of the bolt. And that shows the orientation is correct. Then it's a question of just tightening up the bolt. And again, you can ensure that it's seated correctly. And you want to tighten it all the way, it will tighten up again. You're just nipping this, it doesn't have to be super tight because you're actually sealing on the o-ring that you've previously checked. The next parts to go on are the new gasket and the cover plate. So if you put the, the trick here is, you see, I, although this surface here hasn't got any gasket material on it, it has got a film of oil. Now I used to, I'm quite happy to use a piece of, use it covered in oil because it makes it very easy to take the gasket off next time around. So I'm just putting a film of oil, used engine oil, on the, uh, on the new gasket, placing it onto the cover plate, and then with one bolt, see the hole, you can then fit the whole thing into place. Starting with one bolt, and then if you go diametrically opposite, it's of course much easier on the hoist here. It's a little bit fiddly, more fiddly if you're doing it from under the car. And once again, going across pattern, just to ensure that everything gets aligned and all the holes get aligned. And once again, I'll suggest that you put everything in loosely. Don't put one in and then tighten it up because then you'll find that you can't get the other bolts in. So it's good practice just to put, when you're assembling something with multiple bolts, you put them all in loose first to make sure they've all got engagement before you start tightening any of them up. That way it saves you having to undo the ones you tightened up and then start cursing and generally be dissatisfied with life. So there we go. And these ones are of course 11 mil, which is different from the centre one of the spot of the um, oil filter. And again, now these don't have to be very tight at all because you're compressing a gasket. Um, but they do have to be tight enough not to undo themselves. No doubt, if I was doing this absolutely correctly, I'd be able to tell you what the torque figure is, but I can't because it's not in my mind. But of course I should suggest that you have a torque wrench on them and you do them up to the recommended torque setting. For me, I'm doing them up to sort of a nice snug tight feel, knowing that I'm compressing the gasket a suitable amount. Again, you don't want to do them super tight because you can strip the thread which of course is extremely annoying because it then means you have to drill it out and put a helicoil in, which is another load more hassle. In fact, here's a good, here's a good instance. As I've tightened this one up, the washer itself has broken. So you'll see the washer has split. So I'm now going to have to take that off and change the washer. It does occasionally happen. They're old washers. Here we go. New wash out. And tightened up. Finally a bit of a clean would be quite nice. This engine's got a slight oil leak so it's a little bit dirty under here. And of course, 
it would be a good idea not to forget to put some oil in the engine before you try and start it, which is now what we'll do. Right, so we've changed the oil in filter and now I'm just going to top up the oil. So, I take off the oil cap and it's best if you use a funnel. The book does say it will take five litres once you've drained the, uh, changed the filter. Now the oil we're going to pour in here, the engine was designed to take 2050 uh, and that is the oil which you can use if you get it, but uh, you can also use a modern equivalent I use uh, a semi-synthetic 1040, which if you'll see on the uh, Citroen will specify for hot countries, but given that there is a vast improvement in modern oils, I have found no issues with using the oil. Right, so that's about four and a half litres. Once it's drained into the sump, we then have to start or run the car or even just crank it over until the oil pressure light goes out to ensure that we have oil uh, in the system before we recheck the level. So I will do that. We don't have to run the car for this and you can just crank it and watch for the oil pressure light. <laughs> oil pressure light has gone out and now we'll wait a couple of minutes while the oil drains down and then check the oil on the dipstick. Right, so we've put four and a half litres in and the engine stood for a little while to settle and we're now going to check the oil level on the dipstick. And what we have here, I don't know if your camera can see it, but the level is about halfway up. You'll see these two little marks on the, on the dipstick and that is the full level and that is the low level and the difference between the two equates to one litre of oil. So, given that where we are, we need another half litre of oil, which is what I kind of anticipated. So we'll wipe that and put the last dipstick back in and add another half litre of oil. Then, of course, we have to wait a little while the oil gets down to the bottom of the sump before we recheck the level. And check it again. There we go. Mark just at the top of the level, just where it needs to be. So that is the oil done. Oil change done. All you need to do now is put the cap back on. Probably a good idea not to forget that. Job done. <laughs>